We're going to be uh, talking about uh, Vincent Bianconi, who is currently running for a supervisor's position. He was nominated and placed on the board to fill a seat that was vacated by someone who was elected. Mr. Bianconi has never been elected, and he is running now for election for six years. He wants you to vote him in there uh, to manage our township for the next six years. And he's telling us that he's the one you should vote for. But I disagree, and I'm going to show you why I feel, in my opinion, he should not be on the Board of Supervisors in the future, nor should they, he be on the Board of Supervisors right now. So the first thing we're going to look at is Mr. B. and Coney's uh, contrib uh, contributions he received to run for election. And you'll look at this uh, slide here, and you'll see that he had five donations of $1,000 each. There were no reports of anyone from Exeter Township actually donating any money to him. So these are all outside donations. Uh, the IBEW, which is a local uh, electrical contractors or whatever they are, local union, and they gave uh, Mr. Bianconi $1,000. They're from Reading. Then we have Stephen Lusky and Patricia Lusky, who live in uh, Birdsboro. They gave him $1,000. Uh, Christopher Mandrakia and Charles Mandrakia, they're both Esquires, attorneys. Uh, Christopher uh, is in Conshohocken, and Charles is in near Lansdale. And then finally, there's Mr. James Arms, another $1,000, who lives on Chestnut Street in Birdsboro. So by looking at this and analyzing uh, who these people are, we have a pretty good idea in, in our opinion, in my opinion, that we now know that Mr. Vinnie Bianconi is owned by special interests. Uh, some of the things that these people represent may be construction companies looking to get a good deal on the uh, $22 million that uh, our uh, capital expense budget is showing we're going to be spending in the next three years. Some of these people, uh, I've been told, are associated with a very uh, powerful and wealthy uh, local businessman. Uh, you can find out on your own who that might be, uh, because there are people that told me this, and I I haven't been able to substantiate it. I'm not going to mention who that person is, but you can try to figure it out on your own. But the point of this particular information is to provide evidence that, in all likelihood, Mr. Bianconi is a uh, bought man. He's owned by special interests. And I don't think there's uh, very, very little doubt about that. This is Mr. Bianconi's uh, bankruptcy record, it's a public record, it's available to anyone if you know where to get it, and uh, you can see there, number one, chapter seven, bankruptcy. Mr. Bianconi will tell you in his uh, election literature that he's fiscally responsible, but he's the only one on the board that has a chapter seven bankruptcy. He could have done 11 and tried to work out a payment for the debts that he owed, owed whoever it was that he owed money to, but he chose to do Chapter 7 and get rid of all, the, all of his uh, obligations. But yet he'll tell us on his election material that he's fiscally responsible. I don't believe it. I don't think anyone uh, that is on the board should, should, should be on the board and handling the kind of money that we're talking about. We had seven million in the uh, sewer fund. We sold the, f the sewer for ninety-three point five million. So we're going to have, or we we do have now over a hundred million dollars in cash, and we need people that understand how to manage money, how to do budgets, and make decisions concerning this money that's in the best interest of our township. This is the you the biggest amount of money we're ever going to see. This is a one-time deal. 
And I'm concerned that Mr. B and Coney doesn't have the intellect or the experience to manage this money and make decisions on our behalf. As you already know, he, we, it looks like he's owned by special interest groups. And they're going to want to take as much money, as much of our money as they possibly can get. You can count on it. And uh, I think we have other people that are, are more fiscally responsible than Mr. Bianconi, uh, like Michelle Kircher, who's worked in government for a long, long time. She's got a, a good record. Uh, Greg Galtieri, who is a uh, retired principal from Boyertown School District, who's lived in Exeter for a long time. He, he had to deal with budgets and being fiscally responsible and answering to the public. And then we have Joe, uh, Joe Staub, who is a mortgage broker. So we've got three very good choices that uh, would do very, very well in place of Mr. Bianconi. I think they're much more qualified than he could ever be. So consider this when you go to the polls on Tuesday, November 5th. I'm including this information in this package on Mr. Bianconi's background and his uh, work on the Township Board of Supervisors. He's been on the board for 15 months or so, and he wants you to elect him for another six years. Uh, he makes a lot of claims. The ones that I'm concerned with are where he says he's fiscally responsible. I disagree with that. And also, uh, I've watched him for just under a year, and I can tell you that I haven't seen anything that he has accomplished. And if you look at his election literature, he's not really telling us about anything that he has accomplished, but he still wants to work for us. And, uh, and this little item right here, you can see where Mr. Bianconi made a motion, and it was seconded by Mr. Crusaders to close the Reading Country Club. Both of these people want to not only close the golf course, but the whole club, and their goal is to sell it off to developers. And we would not get a lot of money for that. We'd be lucky to get three million, maybe. And we owe 18 million in debt or around that, that figure. So their plan is to sell it and allow developers to make a lot of money by developing it and we will be stuck with the debt because they do not plan to pay it off. So we would pay the bond debt of 16 to 18 million dollars. Well, I think they're gonna pay 4 million of it off. So we might have 15 million in debt left over that we would have to pay for that in the next 25 years or so, and then have nothing to show for it while the developers will have pieces of the country club and they will make a fortune. This is ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. It's a wonderful asset for this community. And you can see right here in the minutes of March 25th, 2019, page seven of nine, Mr. Bianconi is the instigator here and Mr. Cusatis seconds his motion to close the Reading Country Club. But we're fortunate that we have one intelligent, uh, member of the Board of Supervisors who does his homework and is interested in this community. Mr. Spies uh, states here how passionate he is about it, and he makes an offer to provide whatever amount of money it would take so that the township does not lose any money by keeping the country club open. And a statement by Mr. Bianconi, which makes absolutely no sense to me, where he says that he doesn't want to put anyone at risk, and he could not support Mr. Spies' offer. Uh, if you can figure out what that means, I'd, I'd appreciate it if you would uh, call me up, stop in and see me, send me an email, uh, and explain to me what does that mean. So uh, the motion did not pass, and Mr. Cusatis withdrew his second to the motion. But make no mistake about it, these two people... They want to harm this community by selling the Renning Country Club. And you can count on that. So keep that in mind on November 5th when you go to the polls to vote. 
I almost forgot. I wanted you to know that Mr. Bianconi now will tell you that he wants to keep the Reading Country Club. And in some of his election literature, he's saying he's looking uh, for someone who uh, will run both the country club and the golf course. Don't you believe him? This is political rhetoric. And you could see here, not long ago in March, uh, he wanted to close it down. So it's all for the election. It's all huff and puff. And Mr. Casadas and Mr. Bianconi both want to get rid of this uh, wonderful asset that we have. Uh, don't believe it for one second. If this doesn't convince you that he's the wrong person for the job, I don't know what will. But maybe the next couple slides I show you would help to help you make up your mind. Okay, here's some information I want to share with you. You can discard it or you can take it for what it's worth. But we already know Mr. Uh, Bianconi is most likely owned by special interest groups. Some on the Board of Supervisors uh, admit that. So what else do we know about him? Or how, how about his family? You'll look, uh, you'll see right here, this is a chart of the, a partial chart of the Genovese family membership. Genovese family meaning the mafia crime organization in New York. And uh, you'll note here at the very bottom, Joseph Bianconi. And he was a soldier in the Genovese crime family. And he happens to be Mr. Vincent Bianconi's cousin. He's deceased now, but you know, it's too close for comfort as far as I'm concerned. And the fact that uh, our, uh, this individual who's on our board and he's trying to get elected uh, is apparently taking money uh, from outside interest groups really concerns me. So sometimes the attitude and the history of someone and the people around them can, can tell you what they're going to be like. I'm not saying that's the case here. This is just my opinion that I feel it's too close for comfort. And these are the facts. So uh, take that into consideration when you vote on November 5th. Uh, I can tell you that his opponents, who are uh, Michelle Kircher and Joe Staub, are clean. Uh, there's nothing controversial about either one of them. So uh, let's keep it non-controversial and vote for Michelle Kircher and Joe Staub and put both of them into the six-year seats. I forgot to tell you about uh, Joseph Bianconi, the soldier in the Genovese family. Around here, he was known as Gibraltar Joe. So if you're old enough to remember him, if you've been here that long, uh, you remember a, a gentleman who was uh, four, over 400 pounds. I remember as a kid uh, seeing him uh, around here and uh, he, uh, everyone was kind of afraid of him because uh, he was a bail bondsman, but he dealt in uh, stolen goods and probably loan sharking. And I'm going to put a couple uh, pieces of information up here on him that you'll see in the, in the final s segment of, of this uh, little movie. And uh, you can read them and take them for what they're worth. This slide uh, is about some of the information that I retrieved from the Internet. Uh, it is uh, it, some excerpts, samples of a book about Reading, Pennsylvania, and it talks about, in this case, if you look at number one, the first paragraph, it talks about democratic politics and how Gibraltar Joe B. and Cone was Frank's escort. Frank is someone who was running, the, the mob was running him for uh, mayor of Reading. I don't know if he was elected or not. But uh, it talks about Joe being uh, his bodyguard, basically. He was an ex-boxer, local repute, who became a middleman of disrepute in the stolen goods racket. 
So he was involved in, in stolen goods, including uh, 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 rifles, guns, shotguns, all kinds of weapons. And in number two, the second paragraph is an incident that occurred in Alsace Manor Township, Pickney Grove, in 1969. And uh, looks like they, the police broke up a, a gambling uh, uh, party and 13 people were arrested. And one of those people was Gibraltar Joe Bianconi, who may have been playing in the game or may have just been there as a uh, as muscle. Uh, I haven't read the book, but this is a confirmation of who, if you didn't know who Gibraltar Joe was, this is who he was, and he was a legend here. That is for certain. So now with all this information, I hope that you can make a better, a more informed decision regarding who you're going to vote for on Tuesday, November 5th. Thank you for listening to my presentation.